If you only want to make one change in what you eat, limiting or avoiding added sugars will improve your health more than any other change you could make. It's not easy to make that change. Our brains are wired to love and crave sugar. It's very addictive. That's part of why we love it so much. A few interesting animal studies have been done to learn about the appeal of sugar. One study found that it's more addictive than even cocaine. The researchers used two groups of rats. One group were addicted to cocaine. The other was not. Both groups showed a preference for additional hits of sugar over cocaine. Overall, 94% of the rats chose sugar over cocaine. Even the coke-addicted rats preferred sugar to their other drug of choice. Another study using mice looked at the health ramifications of eating a diet high in added sugar. The average American eats a diet with 13% of their calories from added sugar. Now that's average. Many people consume much more. The researchers gave the mice a diet with 25% of calories from added sugar. Over the 32-week duration of the experiment, sugar-fed females died at nearly twice the rate of the healthy females. In addition, the males who ate the high-sugar diet produced 25% less offspring. I hope that makes it clear. Reducing your sugar consumption can have profound impacts. Even if you're not a rodent, we know that overconsumption of sugar has serious negative health impacts. First, it weakens our immune system. In fact, I want you to think of sugar as the enemy to your immune system. Here's some insight to why I say that. White blood cells are like the soldiers of your immune system. And those soldiers need to be able to react to threats. But when you eat sugar, it reduces your white blood cell reactivity. In other words, they cannot fight infection. In one study, adults ingested 100 grams of sugar. That's a little more than two cans of Coke or two glasses of orange juice. The researchers then measured white blood cell reactivity over time. The study found that white blood cell reactivity was reduced by as much as 40% for as long as five hours. Imagine eating or drinking something that made your muscles 40% weaker for five hours. Would you eat that? Another negative health impact from sugar is increased inflammation. Studies have found a strong link between sugar consumption and chronic inflammation. On one end of findings, people with higher sugar diets are always found to have higher inflammation. At the other end, reduction in sugar consumption reliably leads to reduced inflammation. Why is this happening? When you eat sugar, something called advanced glycosylated end products, or AGEs, are formed in your body, which causes blood vessels to become inflamed and damaged. This can increase your risk for conditions like kidney disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and cardiovascular disease. Consuming sugar also causes a rapid spike in blood glucose levels. This leads to a dramatic activation of your body's stress response. If you habitually overconsume sugar, it will result in a chronic stress condition in your body and continued and chronic stress leads to a condition of cortisol resistance. And cortisol is one of your body's mechanisms for lowering inflammation. So, as you develop a resistance to cortisol, your body has an increase in inflammation. Sugar's not done causing trouble yet. It also damages your gut microbiome. Now you'll recall that in video two, we touched on the importance of a healthy gut microbiome. Remember that the microbes in your gut are important for several processes in your body. In addition to a key role in digestion, they're also critical in regulation of blood sugar balance, hormones, inflammation, moods, sleep, body weight, and bone density. New research means that this list is always growing, and the more we know about your body systems, the more we find a connection to our microbiome. Overconsuming sugar causes an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria and yeast. This overgrowth crowds out and reduces the number of beneficial bacteria and the microbial diversity in your gut. Research has demonstrated that imbalances in your gut can increase your risk for chronic conditions such as cancer, cardiovascular disease, and neurological diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. 
Remember how I mentioned that when you eat sugar, advanced glycosylated end products, or AGEs, are formed in the body? Well, AGEs cause endothelial inflammation and damage and are implicated in the pathophysiology of cardiovascular disease. Eating sugar also promotes tumor growth. Glucose, or blood sugar, is the preferred fuel of tumors. They love it. Excess sugar consumption leads your body to increase insulin and cancer cells are loaded with insulin receptors. When insulin binds to an insulin receptor on a cancer cell, it signals the cell to grow and divide and form tumors. So, eating sugar is literally feeding cancer. As if that weren't enough. You already know that sugar weakens your immune system, but there's more than just catching a cold or a new virus. A weakened immune system also decreases your body's ability to recognize and kill cancer cells. So, eating sugar is simultaneously feeding cancer cells and preventing your body from fighting them. Finally, eating sugar speeds up the aging process. Studies have demonstrated that increased sugar consumption results in shorter cell telomere lengths, which is a natural part of the aging process. Most of our cells are constantly replicating themselves and then dying off. Each replication cycle is like making a photocopy. And like with photocopies, each copy is slightly less perfect than the last. That's the shrinking telomere length. Telomere length naturally shortens with each cell cycle. And if it falls to a critical short length, the cell is no longer able to divide and often malfunctions. This process is accelerated through exposure to oxidative stress and inflammation, both of which come along with sugar consumption. Shorter telomeres have been associated with increased risks of chronic diseases, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and some cancers. That's six rather serious downsides to sugar consumption. And I'm sorry to tell you, there really isn't an upside. The good news is, that it's easier and easier to know what you're eating and make better choices. One problem with the standard American diet, it's that many manufactured products have added sugar, even if you wouldn't suspect it. Would you add sugar to pizza sauce? How about salad dressing? No, you probably wouldn't. But if you buy those off the shelf, there's a good chance they have a surprising amount of sugar added. And adding to the confusion, Many foods that are considered healthy choices are loaded with added sugar, like yogurt. Everyone knows that yogurt is part of a healthy diet, right? But most flavored yogurt, it's loaded with sugar. 26 grams is nearly as much sugar as you'd get in a can of Coke. That's not health food, that's dessert. A lot of people have heard that there's sugar in ketchup. What's the big deal? You only use a little bit, right? Just one tablespoon of Heinz ketchup has nearly four grams of sugar. A good burger might have two tablespoons, and you'll have some fries with that you'll dip in ketchup, probably another two tablespoons at least. Now you've had a good burger and some fries, and without knowing it, you've eaten about 16 grams of sugar. I suspect that if you had that same burger and fries, but used ketchup without added sugar, you wouldn't say, you know what this needs? A few heaping spoonfuls of sugar. All of the damage and hazards of sugar, and you didn't even need to eat it. So how do you know what to avoid? Fortunately, in 2020, the FDA mandated that all packaged foods list added sugar on the label. So if you buy something in the United States, it should have a label that looks like this. I recommend reducing all types of sugar natural and added. But for now, we'll stay focused on the worst offender, the added sugar. That's what's behind most of the ill effects we've talked about, and it's the easiest to reduce and eliminate from a healthy diet. You can see on this label, there's a line for total sugars, and the next line is added sugars. The total sugars includes those naturally occurring sugars. What we're most interested in is that second line, in this example, if you consume one cup of this food, you've eaten four grams of added sugars. The entire container, eight grams of added sugars. For reference, four grams of sugar is about one teaspoon. 
not a huge amount by itself, but those grams add up fast. Take a look at the things you eat in a day. If you're consuming more than 20 grams of added sugars daily, I challenge you to do an experiment where you limit your added sugar intake to less than 20 grams daily. We will talk about more setting and reaching a nutrition goal like that in the final video that focuses on goal setting. For now, remember that just reducing your added sugar consumption will have a tremendous positive impact on how you feel, your performance, and how you age. The SAD diet is standard because in our food supply, eating that way is the easiest, often cheapest way to eat, but it's literally killing us. In upcoming videos, We'll look at other elements of the SAD that you can challenge and change in your diet. Remember, look at food labels, consider if there's a better option, and feel good about what you're eating. Thanks for tuning in.